Heavenly Father, as I come before you, just as transparent as possible, Father, I truly ask that your word goes forth and lays a foundation for the preparation, Lord God, for what you are doing in this world, in this nation, in the children of obedience and the children of disobedience, Lord. I ask that you have your way in this room that I am in, in the rooms that they are in. I pray that those who are listening, those who tune in, those who hear this on YouTube, those who hear this on Facebook, those who hear this on any platform would actually go and search for you, Father God, and get a revelation of the season and the time that we are in. For the times are wicked and evil and deceitful, Lord, and we ask, Lord God, that you strengthen us that we stay the course in this fight, in this faithful fight and struggle to be the light in a dark place. And Heavenly Father, I ask that you bless each and every person listening to this message and that you will open up the eyes of their understanding. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, good morning. My name is Pastor Ronnie Muniz. I am from Saved by Grace in San Francisco. We are bringing a word today and I can't even actually place a title on it because I've been, there's so much just from this morning, there was another part added to this. And I mean, there's just so much that I pray to God that you all listen. I pray to God really, and I'm going to say this really, really with love. If you are in this service today, you really should be feeling and acting and participating as if you was in a church building. Not on your, not on, not exercising, not doing something else, but actually focusing because when we focus on what God is saying, we're listening. And that's what the church is missing because it's virtual. And I was sharing with someone today when they was talking about, well, I can't be in church today because I'm on vacation. For those of you that remember when I went on vacation and I didn't tune in, it grieved me for a long time. And a lot of you had said how you felt that, you know, I needed to be there because you're drawing from the well of God. So we have to remember that too. Church is on the phone. You could be on vacation. You could be driving. I know a lot of you that drive and put this on while you're driving. We have to stay connected because the world is falling apart. And Christians are falling to the wayside. And those of us that are staying in the light, light need to stay in the light. So I did email you guys most of the service today. There was one I couldn't find, which was amazing. But there's three, I mean, there's a whole lot that has been going on in, in the world. And a lot of people have been asking me, what do you mean about these four beasts? What do you mean about the America being the, the, the uh, Babylonian um, nation? Why are you saying this? I hear people falling to the wayside that are Christians, people questioning where, what, why is God doing this? Why is God? There's so much that's going on that I really want to bring some revelation scriptorial to you. And I was praying in the other room, just like, God, I do not want to get in the way of this sermon. I want you to have your way because there's a lot. So I don't want to spend too much time running my chops, bringing an introduction to this service. So he had me break it up in pieces. So we got a lot to cover. So the first part, and for those of you that got it, it says, soon I will not be found by you, says the word of God. I didn't say this scripture. The Bible said this scripture. And this is how we're going to start because I think the world and Christians and the world is telling Christians, where is your God? You guys have been talking about the return of Jesus Christ for years and years and years and there's no sign of him. And they're so focused on what's going on in the world, Christians as well, that they're falling, wondering why we keep talking about the return of Christ, but he's not here yet. But we all fail to realize once you die, 
Once you've taken your last breath, once you've had that last heartbeat, your destination is sealed. So if you're not in right standings with God now, you're not going to be in right standings then. Even if you don't return, be here for the return of Christ, you will stand accountable when he does return and we all stand before that throne of grace. So our job as Christians is to get us to stay the course. So the first script, I'm going to just give you all these scriptures for those of you that don't have it on this first page, because I'm going to do my best to go through this and get it all into you within the amount of time that I have. The first scripture is Isaiah 55, 6. That's the first scripture. Uh, some of you are emailing me, telling me that you're not getting my email. So please email me at pastor.muniz, M-U-N-I-Z, at AOL.com so I can make sure you're getting the, the, the documents that go with the sermons and the Bible studies. Um, Isaiah 59, 1 through 3. Galatians chapter 3, 1 through 3. Proverbs 26, 11. And 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. Now, I don't know how, again, I'm going to read through this. This is the first beginning. This is the opening because I believe that I, I, was, I was at Costco's yesterday and they gave us a, a donation. They the lady called me up, hey, you're saved by grace and blah, blah, blah. So I went there. Well, so we started talking about Afghanistan and everything. And her reply was a reply that someone who doesn't have the knowledge of the Bible would give. And I was in this position of, do I spend this time to really break this down to her? But I got a lot of things to do. But I'm starting to see that a lot of the world is not really paying attention to scripture unfolding you got to understand that jesus is fulfilling prophecy that was in the book and the problem with people even christians is the word is so watered down the word is not being taught there's only things that are being taught are things that are gratifying the world and what we can get from the world while we are in the world instead of what we need in the spirit to prepare for our spiritual journey so because all that's happening, I believe that's why God looks for men and women like are connected to us to go out and tell these. So I invite you again. I invite a lot of people to church again, not to see me, but to get the revelation knowledge of the word of God so that they can go and share this word of God like you are. Isaiah 59, 6. Seek ye the Lord. Listen to this. While he may be found, call you upon him while he is near. Just that right there. If you read that correctly and any type of translation, seek the Lord while he may be found, which means one day you're not going to be able to find him. One day you're not going to hear from him. He's going to shut down like he did to the children of Israel for 400 years because of their disobedience and their lack of paying attention to only serving him and not other gods. Look at this world. They are serving so many different types of God and it's amazing because they don't see it because they're blinded by the world and the system of the world and the money of the world and the sports of the world that they're like, oh, Jesus, well, he's over there. But you're a Christian. If you are a Christian, you're supposed to be Christ-like, which means that you are supposed to be biblically sound to see what's going on. Yesterday, I was at the beach sitting down in my truck doing Bible study. In my computer, I wasn't really out there enjoying the sun and everything. I was out breathing, but I was serving God at that moment. And I'm thinking I wish somebody would come by and ask me what I was doing so I could present the word of God to them. I'm always looking for opportunity. Isaiah 59, 1 through 3. Now, we understand that he just said, seek him while he may be found. But sometimes you are closing the door to God's voice 
and God's presence. Isaiah 59, 1 to 3. This all came to me this morning, literally. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that he cannot save, neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. See, there are so many what I call pretender Christians. When I was a, a homie in the world, we would look at some dudes and be like, man, you were just pretending. You're, you're not even what you say you are because you're too busy running your mouth saying who you are. And that's what happens with a lot of Christians today. They swear because I'm going to talk Bible and I'm going to throw scripture at you. I'm going to sound like the Bible, but my actions, my words, and my heart are far from the Bible. So I am deceiving and being deceived because I am more what we call book smart instead of spiritually revelation smart. We have to walk this thing out so people can see us. And they can be driven to the God in us so that they can want that God. Now, we just read that God will turn away from us if we're iniquity. You know, I think people really need to understand what Jesus was illustrating on the cross. I mean, really understanding that when he was sitting on that cross and he looked up to the father and said, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they're doing. And then he said, why have you forsaken me? God is looking at his son, Jesus, God in the flesh, consuming all of our sins unto himself. So he turned away. So what do you think God does to you when you're living in sin, walking in sin, talking in sin, acting in sin? He can't be around that because he's holy. And it says you're grieving the Holy Spirit. So if my actions, my words, and my deeds, and my very attitude and character is more worldly than godly, I'm grieving the Holy Spirit. And if I'm grieving the Holy Spirit, I'm not making God happy according to Romans 8. God says those who are in the flesh cannot please me. So we have to understand this because this is where the world is at. Galatians 3 1. Get this. Sin separates us from God. Christian, non Christian. Sin is a God separator. He can't deal with that for all of us. And please understand something. I tell you guys all the time. This morning, all the time I'm doing service and preparing for service, I feel like I'm in trouble with God. Because as strong as I think I'm acting and as good as of a Christian I think I am, when I read this stuff that I'm preparing, I'm like, dang, I'm nowhere close to this. But but I think I'm like in this fight. But when we start to really examine ourselves and really say, wait a minute, man, am I really walking this out? Or am I just playing this? Ah, oh, man, you know what? I'm not going to really pray today. And believe you me, there are days I don't want to pray, but I have to say something to him. Because if I don't invite him in, the enemy's going to come in and the world's going to come in and I'm going to be messed up in my head and that's it. I'm, I'm a rap. And believe you me, I, you, you guys don't get it. I get it first from him. Then I tell it to you and it comes back into my ears. So I'm constantly like, all right, son, you better be walking this out. Am I perfect? No. Do I fall? Yes. Do I sin? Yes. But I do my best to not do it on purpose. Galatians chapter three, this is what's happening to a lot of Christians. Oh, foolish Galatians, who have bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ has been evident. In other words, you have read the scriptures, you have seen the power of God, he has transformed you. You know what's going on. What, who and what has misguided you to stop doing this? I swear, 
There are so many relationships where either the man or the woman is keeping the other one from getting to church, getting to the word of God. How do I know this? Because there are conversations that I have. And I'm like, you, you're you going to stand before God, not me. And if that person has misguided you and you let them, God ain't going to say, well, this is about, so I'm going to deal with them. No, because it's a personal relationship between you and God. And some of you women don't want to leave those men because you think that's all it is. But when you die and stand before God, you're going to go meet that dude in hell and go through all that and vice versa with a man to a woman. It's it, Man, let me tell you, this is no game. God said you shall have no other God beside me. Beside me. I went to a function yesterday and it was for a kid. And it blew my mind because I could, I'm could. i walking through the to, to get to it and I felt like I was walking through some kind of gang territory to get to this kid's party and these people were involved in the kid's party. I get to the kid's party and there's all this partying going on and I'm like, this is a kid's party. And I'm like, okay, I'm, I, I'm in and out. Because I just came to drop off a gift. But before I could leave, it was funny because someone said, Pastor Ronnie, can you pray for us? And I'm like, of course. Let me do what I got to do. And I just started praying. And, and it was so amazing because this one person asked me if I had wanted a beer. And I was like, no. And after the prayer, he came up to me and said, hey, brother, that was deep. Now, please forgive me for it. I'm like, it's all good. Because I came to bring the light. Are you the light where you go? Can someone say to you, can you pray for us? Can you speak the word of God to us? This, this is who we are. This is who we have to proclaim to be all the time. Proverbs 26 verse 11. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me finish verse 2 and 3 of Galatians 1. Christ, evident, set forth crucified among you, verse 2, this only would I learn of you, receive, did you receive the Holy Spirit by what you worked, or by the law, or by the hearing of faith? Did you, are you turning away from God because you feel you can't do this right enough, but you know the word of God? Is it your works or the law that got you right with God or was it your faith in Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross to pay for the penalty of your sins? That's where our faith is. Let me get you to understand something. God does not, I wrote this down. I, I, I hope, I wish you all could see this, but I wrote this down. I said, my grace is sufficient. And inside of it, I wrote, he does not owe us. We owe him. The Bible's clear. We owe him. We're in debt to him. He paid the price we could not pay so we could go the other way that leads to Jesus. God doesn't have, when I pray to God, how, you know, it's been 10, 20, 15 years I've been on this prayer. I sometimes feel like him saying, I don't have to give you anything else. I gave you grace. I gave you an open door to heaven. And I'm like, wow, you know, when you look at it that way, I'm not going to hell. So I, I owe God, if God chooses to bless me, if God chooses to answer that prayer, if God chooses to heal me, if God chooses to deliver me, it's by his choice. And if he doesn't, his grace is sufficient. Because his power is made strong in our weaknesses. So some of those things aren't going away. Because God is using that. He's using that to show his power in you. That someone else could see it and say, man, I'm going to follow that God. Because I know that brother and sister, I know they couldn't do that without that God. And I don't have that God. And I need that God. And that's how we are walking epistles of this word. Proverbs 26, 11, as a dog returns to his vomit, so a fool returns to his folly. A lot of, un, un, God, it's sad, a lot of Christians are falling back 
It's like in the army when they say fall back from the fight. No, we got to push on. We got to push on. We got to endure and persevere because the time is short. Remember what the Bible says, not what Pastor Ronnie says. The Bible says those who endure until the end. Not to the middle. Not somewhat, but those who endure until the end. Let me tell you something, church. If I'm the only one inviting people to church, inviting people to Bible study, bringing what I'm learning to everybody else, then that's a problem because you are an extension of what you're learning. If you are being fed, if you are being guided, if you are being convicted, if you are being converted, you want people to come to that because the world keeps preaching prosperity. The world keeps preaching what the world wants to hear. And the Bible said they will have itching ears finding preachers to preach what they want to hear that will gratify them here. Brothers and sisters, all this stuff I accumulated, including these glasses I'm wearing, this shirt that's on my back and this laptop or phone that I'm doing ministry on, when I die, it's all staying here. Someone's gonna come pick it up. Someone's gonna come donate it. Someone's gonna keep it. I ain't taking none of it with me, but I know one thing. If my soul is not right with God, I'm in trouble. I am going, rather you want to believe this, rather you want to share this message, if I am not in right standards with Jesus Christ, have not been born again of spirit and water, and have not turned away from my wicked ways, I am not going to heaven. I'm telling you for myself, every day of my life, I say, God, you have blessed me with one more day to get it right. Because if I did something that has messed up my place with you, I know everybody says once saved, always saved. I've already preached on that. That is not true. You could go to your pastors, whoever you want to, go to the Bible and let them tell you for yourself. It's very important, brothers and sisters, that we endure to the end. Last scripture for this section. Second Peter chapter three, verse nine. And this is where we're going into the second part of this message is because of this scripture. Again, all this was given to me this morning. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, meaning returning of Christ. As some men count slackness, but is long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Now, in that right there, that's where men are saying, oh, Jesus, you guys been talking about Jesus for, what, what makes you think what's going on right now is prophecy being fulfilled? What do you mean about the four beasts? And how are you going to say that's these four? Who are you to say that? Well, I'm not the one saying it. I am giving you what I am getting. If I am wrong, then that will be my standing before God. But I do know that we fail to realize that the Bible is a book of prophecies. And this morning when I was writing this down, what came to me was in Matthew, it says that Jesus came to fill all the law and the prophets the law was what he died for because we could not fulfill that law. The prophecies are being fulfilled. He's come to fulfill both of those things. And he's already done it and he's continuing to do it. Now, the second part of this is the American, Bab uh, the American Babylon has fallen. Yesterday, I was watching the news. And I, I posted this on Facebook and I posted this on Instagram and I posted this on YouTube. 
this carnal lady, now she might have been saved, I don't know, but the, the anger in her face, she said, um, she goes, today, mark today, America has fallen from grace. When she said that, I was just stoked. Like, there was no other revelation that I needed to hear that couldn't tell me that America is in Babylon. And someone that asked me, I thought America was the little horn. I want you to see something. We're going to take a journey. Again, we're going to read from Daniel chapter 7. And we're going to read from Daniel chapter 7 from 4 to 8. And we're going to go more into detail in this probably a Bible study. But I'm just laying a foundation for revelations right now. So we talked about all that's going on, people sinning, people, God probably not going to hear them because they're walking in sin, how they're turning away, how they're returning back to the world, how they're falling back. We, we're seeing this all happen. We see it every day, even with churches. It's amazing how so many churches are not really preaching, hey, get it right. Jesus is coming back. And if you ain't saved, you're going to go to hell. Who are you to tell me I'm going to hell? I'm not. I'm just telling you what the Bible said. See, that's the thing. If you take them to the word of God, they cannot fight the word of God. Oh, man wrote that book. Well, according to me, the Bible said the Holy Spirit inspired that man. So either you believe that or you don't. It doesn't matter to me if you believe it. I believe it. So if you don't believe it, you take that up with God because I'm only telling you what the Bible said. So... Maybe you want to go search this out for yourself and find out if I'm telling the truth because you're going to realize it's not me telling you, but it's the word of God. And that's how you, you let the word of God talk for itself. Daniel chapter seven, verse four. The, okay, I wrote, and okay, and four beasts and four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse one from another. If you don't know what diverse means, it means different. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked and it was lifted up from the earth and made stand upon the feet as a man. And a man's heart was given to it. And behold, another beast, a second like to a bear. And it raised up itself on one side and it had three ribs in the mouth of its of it between its teeth of it. And they said thus unto, Arise, devour much flesh. After this, I beheld, and lo, another like a leopard, which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl. The beast had also four heads, and dominion, power, was given to it. After this, I saw the in the night vision, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth. It devoured and brake in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it, and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn before whom there were three of the first horns plucked, first horns plucked up, by the roots, and behold, it is in the it, it, behold in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking great things. Now these are the four beasts that we're gonna go more into detail, and I'm gonna tell you why we're going more into detail because I'm still studying this. Is because we have some things to look at here. We have the lion. We have the eagle's, eagle's wings, the man's heart, the three ribs in the mouth between the teeth. We have the leper. We have the bear. 
and we have the back of the four wings of a fowl, all these things that are connected to these beasts represent something. So I'm still getting more into this, but I want to jump over to Revelations chapter 18. And if you can go there, I would really appreciate it because the reason why is because I, I was telling someone the other day, I, I reposted something. I said, go read this for yourself and tell me what you get from this because this is why I said America. Again, these are, these are things that I'm getting. I'm not saying that the Bible is saying this, but I'm looking at what's taking place and what's happening and I'm sharing it with it. But I'm going before God and saying, hey, shut my mouth if I'm on the wrong path because I don't want to be saying something contrary to the word of God. But in Revelations chapter 18, we're going to read from verses 10 to 19. And then I want you to go back and study this for yourself so we can jump on to the next part because I'm being graced enough with God's anointing to be able to get through all this. Revelations chapter 18, we're going to start at verse 10. Standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, At last also that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come, and the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise anymore. Now you have to understand something. When you think about America, those are the ships that come in importing stuff to us. That stuff coming from overseas. I need you to see this and go back and really do some study for yourself. Because when I read this part, this may be, we, we're not even done, but I need you to see this. When you pay attention, look at the world. We get ships from everywhere coming into the ports. That's why we have all these ports in Oakland, San Francisco, around this nation that are bringing stuff in. Verse 12, the merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and of pearls and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and all thine wood and all manner vessels of ivory and all manners vessels of most precious wood and of brass and of iron and of marble. Now, back in those days, you have to understand that these things were what we consider the things that we have for now in this world, the things that are coming over, all the things that merchants are sending, food, cars, all these things that are being imported. Imported, imported, just think of that word. That's what this is. So what is what is the world's import? What is the world watching? You have to understand something. Right now, America, what has just happened? Now, if you pay attention, I was watching the news again. Biden is trying to clean it up. Now, again, the Bible says for us to pray for our president. So regardless how far, how what he's done, you have to remember, America put itself here. I don't care what anybody says. When we started making all these laws that were against the Bible, we opened up the floodgates of hell. They did that. People, Christians voting all these things, not really looking, is what's Bible? God, what should I pray for? God, what lines up with the word? We just, oh, I don't like this person. I don't like, you realize something? And this is so amazing. It's so amazing. We're like six, seven months into this president and people that voted for him are already pissed off at him. People that voted Trump in were already, were upset with Trump. People, every president, that someone voted in, someone, somebody, someone had something to say about him, but yet, are you praying for him? And that's what we have to understand, regardless what, and you have to understand something. God allowed you Christians and non-Christians to put these people into place. And he said, well, you guys are living worldly carnal lives anyway, so I'm going to give you what you want because that's what you want. God said, I am your God. I am your king. Follow what I say in the dictates of my book and that I will be with you to the ends of the earth. 
But what happened, man started following their own ways, their own dictates, their own laws, and that brought separation. When you start bringing in um, same-sex marriages, abomination, human trafficking, uh, uh, making all these weird animals and people out of all the all this stuff and wickedness and abomination that the world is doing has opened up the door to the devil. But they want to go, oh, you Christians, man, what are you talking about? We are telling you what this book has been telling us for years, but you don't want to pay attention to it. Even the president, oh, we, we love God and we this and that. Man, you need to go read the book then and find out where you're erring at and pray to God that he brings the grace back to us that we have lost. And it's only because of solid Christians praying for the president, asking God to have mercy, that the real floodgates haven't opened up. But guess what? Guess what? They're coming. Because a lot of Christians, oh, I love the Lord. Man, there's people being persecuted, running for their lives, not being able to pray in public. Man, Brother Paul and me was praying, and the other day I sat back, even yesterday, thinking of all these soldiers, the 13 that died, and I'm thinking, am I really grieving? Am I really praying a heartfelt prayer for these folks? Am I really doing this? Because they're, I don't know them and they're over there fighting, but they're fighting for the freedom that we so um, take advantage of. But are we fighting for them in prayer? Are we fighting for the presidents not understanding the vice president of these governments? Man, when you see what's going on, I'm just sitting there going, hey, that, that's what they asked for. Okay, I don't want to get off. See, I can go. I can go. Prophecy being fulfilled. Paul sent me something today about Russia. And I'm just watching, again, the four beasts. Russia, China, Japan, United States. This prophecy, this revelation came to me five years ago. I still have notes from five years ago. And I'm just watching these things come. Just watching. Next week, what, 9-11, 20 years? All this stuff? Afghanistan is the one that started all this? 9-11? Hello? You're going to pull all these people out and leave all these people stuck in hell with these folks killing them? But yet they came to aid for us? Shouldn't we be coming to aid for them? I mean, we could... We have to understand this is a spiritual battle. The battle that's taking place should be placed on our knees, placed in our hearts. Are we really? And let me tell you before you be like, oh, that pastor's talking. No, I don't pray all the time for the president. No, I don't pray all the time for our soldiers. But there are times that I do. There are times that I get involved in that. And I thank Brother Paul for bringing that back to my remembrance because we need to pray for our leaders that that dude get real salvation, that he gets an understanding. You need to understand the things that that president has been through. That's why we can't be so judgmental. That's why the Bible says to pray because remember, we used to be just like the world. Whew. Verse 13. And cinnamon and odors an ointment and frankincense and wine and oil and fine flour and wheat and beasts and sheep and horses and chariots and slaves and souls of men. Verse 14. And the fruit that thy soul lusteth after are departed from thee. And all things which were dainty and all goodly are departed from thee, and thou shalt find them no more at all. What's happening is a lot of nations and countries are like, what is America doing? So you think that that's not going to have some repercussion on, on us? We're already going through a lot with the famine, with the fires, with the tsunamis, with the earthquakes, with the COVID. Do you just happen to think that all this stuff is continuously happening? Can you not see America falling from grace? Can you not see us turning our back on the Bible? But yet there's not so many people really talking about this. And we all live as if tomorrow is promised to us. 
We all live as if we are we we uh deserve to be as free as we are. You think that God's just going to sit back and say, oh, yeah, I'm going to just, this dawned on me the other day. If God is allowing Christians in other countries to die in his name, what makes you think he ain't going to allow us to see what's really in our heart when we're stuck at gunpoint, when we're being tortured, and, and we're being tortured to the point where it's so unbearable to where they're like, I will stop this torture if you denounce God. That is when your true Christianity is going to really show up. So stop. Please stop saying I would die for Christ. Because you are in a free country, per se, to say that. I pray to God um, occasionally. Father, give me the strength when that time comes that I will endure to the end Christ in my heart and in my mouth, even to death. Instead of just saying it, one day we may all have to prove it. Verse uh, 15, the merchants of these things which were made rich by her shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment, weeping and welling. These folks are backing up because they're saying, man, what's going on in America? Man, uh-uh, I don't want to deal with them right now. Uh, there's too much going on over there. We're going to just stay at bay from them. We have to understand God did this in the Old Testament too. God says there's nothing new under the sun. What has happened before shall happen again. And what's to come has already been. There, I mean, just, I mean, you need to read your book for yourself. You think I just know all this because I wake up and know, oh, let me just say this. No, I've read this for myself. I've studied this for myself. I've been in this book. My, my, anniversary for God is November 2nd. That's my anniversary. Do you know I got saved two months after 9-11? So I, th th there's a big significance to that for me. Not just to a lot of people, but that's when I got saved. So I'm like, wow, this is big. Verse uh, 16, and saying, alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. For in one hour, so great riches is come to nothing. And every shipmaster and all the company in ships and sailors and as many as trade by sea stood afar off and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like unto the great city? And they cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city wherein were made rich all that had shipped in the, by the sea and by reason of her coastlands, for in one hour is she made desolate. So when you ask me that question, why do I say America? Because America was considered the greatest nation of all time, besides Babylon. And we had it all. We was great. Do you realize right now we look like a bunch of wimps? We look like we are running from a fight instead of running to a fight. Now, again, when we when you put someone in a leadership role, see, when you guys look at me, I am your leader. For those of you that say I'm from the church of saved by grace. So when the enemy comes, he's going to come at me hard because he wants to kick my feet out because then he says, then I can get to the rest of them. Please understand something. 
it blows my mind, truly blows my mind when people have a phone and a computer and they can't get to church. When they have a phone and a computer, but they're late to church or the Bible study. It's like God kind of made it simple. Like, okay, I mean, examine your heart. You couldn't even make it to the building. Now you don't even leave the building you're in to hear about the word of God. We have to understand something. And I say this, we are going to stand before him. This world needs us. It don't just need Ronnie. It needs everybody on this line and everybody listening to this message. I've been preaching this way for the last two years. I've been talked about. I've been criticized. Who are you to say this? Who are you to preach that? You don't know this. You don't know that. But yet the world has not gotten any better. And I keep telling everybody, repent, turn back to God, get in right standards with God, examine your heart. Are you walking the way the Bible is? Are you holding your pastors in, in, um, uh, in, in, in their integrity to how they're supposed to be with you? Are you reading the word to find out what's being preached to you is actually coming from God's Holy Spirit? Are you doing that? Stop judging the pastors and all them that are actually trying to get you right with God, not trying to get you rich, not trying to get you prosperity, not trying to get all your answers, uh, uh, pray for your prayers answered. Are you in right standards with God? Are you ready to meet him? Whether you die today or you're here when Jesus returned, are you ready? If I'm still working out my salvation and you all think, wow, Pastor Ronnie's pretty deep. Nah, man, I'm just like you. I sin every day. I have wicked thoughts in my head. I'm constantly going before God, asking him to help me, asking him to deal with me. I have arguments. I have disputes with him. I have all this stuff, just like a regular son to a father. But I also reverence him. And I also know I'm going to stand accountable for every word that's come out of my mouth, every thought, every deed, every empty word, I'm going to stand and give an account for that. All the people that I've placed this word, the Bible says in the book of James, those who are pastors, our punishment is more severe. So guess what? All of you on this line, no matter what, I'm going to get punished even more than you. So you think that I take this lightly? Oh no, let me tell you, I don't want to even have this position. And I preached on last, uh, I think it was last week about me getting help like Moses needed. And it was amazing because me and my mother was having a conversation and for some reason she went there and I'm like, wow. And I'm listening to her and I'm telling her, yeah, I preached on this, but it's the truth. I don't have no one that comes over and says, hey, Pastor Ronnie, you know what? I'm going to, you need a break. I'm going to go do Sunday service. Or you know what? I need a, you need a break. I'm going to do uh, Bible study. I don't because I need to make sure that whoever's imparting into your ears is lined up with the word of God and that they are in right standards with God and they're not going to put something in your head that's not supposed to be there because no matter what, it's going to come back to me because God's going to say, I put you over that house. I didn't put them over that house. So I'm very careful. When you guys have women's group, I if I wouldn't have reached out to Bernie, I, I wouldn't have known it was actually a good thing. I don't reach out to find out what you guys did. I reach out to say, was it good? Everything cool? Because I am I care. When we have men's group, I come and tell you this is what's going on because we're one body. And if something's wrong in the body, I need to know because I need to say, go to God for that and say, how do we fix this? Same thing with the, with the baptism. I told us all, we're going to have a baptism, have a service, and everybody stay quiet except for the two people getting baptized. And we're still trying to find a place to do it, but we're all one body. The, 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 the desire for these folks to get baptized, and that's what Jesus said. Be ye baptized in water and spirit because you can't enter into the kingdom of heaven. That is so vitally important. So we have to be strong in these days and in these times and be able to say, 
This is why this is being said. This is why I'm telling you this scripture. This is why I'm inviting you to this function, that function, Bible study, church, small group. Um, you're at work. You are you are the light. And I need to get going with this because I need you to see this. This is good. I, I mean, because I'm hearing what's coming out of my mouth and it's coming back into my ears because I want everybody to be solid soldiers and warriors for Christ. I have had one-on-ones with so many of you on this page right now and seen your anointing, heard your anointing, have had like, wow, I'm like, man, this these folks are good. These folks are getting it, Lord. So I know that whatever God is saying to you, you're going and saying to somebody else, and you was hungering and thirsting for God before you met me, and now God is imparting into you more wisdom, more understanding, because he needs folks like us that ain't going to say, well, I'm going to water the word down for you, or I'm going to compromise this scripture, or when I sin, hey, don't judge me. God's still working on me. No, we're going to say, I messed up. Please forgive me. God is still working on me, and I need you to tell me when I'm messing up, because I need you to be accountable for me because we need to be each other's brothers and sisters we are each other's keepers and I really don't take this position lightly believe you me I'm like next week is Labor Day I'm like yeah that's kind of cool but I still got to do Sunday service I still got to be prepared for Sunday service no matter what God does I got to be prepared because this is where he's placed me right now and so you know I'm just uh I'm excited. Here we go. This is what this is what Sunday service was. This is it right here. And I'm going to go through this as quickly as I can, but then again, with the way the spirit leads. So write down these scriptures really quick in case you don't didn't get the email. Galatians chapter 5 verse 1. Mark chapter 4 Verse 14 to 20. First Peter chapter 5, verse 8 through 9. First Peter chapter 2, verse 9. Second Timothy 2, verse 4. And the last one is Hebrews 11, verse 13 to 16. Now, the title of this was, Don't let this world and the devil and your own doubts lead you back into bondage and strongholds. The reason I read what I did about people not hearing from God, people sin separating them from God. Why is people backsliding? Oh, foolish Galatians, why have you backslid? Why is the dog returned to its vomit? It's because that's what the world did and is doing. And because of that, these things we don't understand is that a lot of these reasons that the world and, the, and our leaders have done this has opened the door for punishment and discipline from God. No matter how you want to look at it, God is bound by his word. So if God is holding us to his word, that means he's holding himself to his word because he cannot lie. So if he put a nation like this under such great um, she's emphasis where we were so great, once these presidents and these leaders started turning from God and backsliding and getting into the flesh, God had no choice but to say, okay, because we're in here too. But if God is allowing other Christians in other countries and nations to be killed, you know, sometimes, believe it or not, we need that. 9-11 woke up a lot of Christians, and then they went back to sleep. There's times God will allow devastation and even orchestrate devastation, and it wakes everybody up, and then they fall back asleep. That is what I, COVID woke everybody up and put, well, not even everybody. It kind of, to me, COVID was sifting because Christians that claim to be Christians got sifted really good and a lot of stuff. And I can go on, but that's not. So I'm going to do 
everybody a favor because it's almost 11. These are the scriptures that we are going to, the, everything I just gave you now is what we're going to go over either in Bible study or next Sunday service because, not because I don't want to go on. This got nothing to do with that. Please get that in your in your spirit. But I like to respect the hour only because some people kind of start losing their gravitation toward the word after a while. So I'm going to end on this scripture because I really want you all to get it because this was what I was told to end on. Matthew chapter 5, verse 13 to 16. Now, what I was going to read to you that we're going to go over later is about a Christian getting weak and why they're getting weak and what makes you go back, but you can't go back. And the reason why we can't is because of this scripture right here and these scriptures. So these right here, I would say read every day for the next week. Matthew 5, 13 to 16, the three scriptures. Matter of fact, can you please go to them in your Bible as we come to a close? I want you to go to this, to this chapter, please. I'll even give you a few seconds to get there because I think you need to see it for yourself. And for those of you that are listening on YouTube, um, I pray that you subscribe to our, our page so that you can get notifications. Click that notification so when we do post new sermons, because sometimes throughout the week, I'll do a small blurb or something and I'll post it on uh, YouTube. It's a lot easier for me to do it on YouTube than it is on Facebook. Facebook is having its own issues for, <laughs> for the word of God. <laughs> but... Um, Please, and feel free, and if you want to bring your tithes and offerings or donations, um, I'm on Zelle, um, PastorRonnie.Munez at AOL.com, and we are also on uh, PayPal, and there's a couple of other ones that we are, um, my daughter will post them before the end of the service, um, Matthew chapter 5, verse 13 to 16. You are the salt of the earth. You and me are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost his savor, flavor, that's what savor is, wherewith shall it be salted again? If you lose your flavor, sometimes it's hard to get it back because people won't want to listen to you because they'll be like, you're that same Christian that said all this before, and then you did all this. That's a double-minded man being tossed to and fro. It is thenceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Verse 14, you are the light of the world. Like, now get that. You're the salt and the light. And when most people cook, they cook with salt because it brings this taste, right? We are the light. I mean, you, that's who you need to understand. And salt and light are both white. <laughs> Go figure. You are the light of the world. A, a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel but on a candlestick, and it gives light unto all that are in the house. You are this light of the world. You are an uh, example of Jesus Christ on the earth. Your light should shine so bright that men and women and children are drawn to you. Even though sinners are coming at you and, 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 and just being evil. Let that light shine even brighter. Don't let that evil wickedness put your light out because eventually that light's going to overpower that darkness. And believe it or not, it's happened to me and I know it's happened to a lot of you where sinners that get touched by God because of your love, your endurance, your perseverance through, uh, through being persecuted, being talked about, being lied about, being backbiting, they come back and say, man, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. 
And when we think about that, that's what Jesus said on the cross. Forgive them, for they know not what they're doing. Because guess what? We didn't know either. So how are we going to judge those who don't know? Verse 16. Let your light, not my light, your light. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Not you, not me. That they will see you. It's like when I went to that party yesterday. You know how, and I actually went at the end thinking I was not coming at the end, but it's like, I could just see like God saying, I'm going to just throw this light into this dark place really quick. And I'm going to let my son speak. I want to speak to my son's mouth. And it's going to do something that nobody even knows because the word is a seed. And yesterday that word touched somebody where later on God had a conversation with them. And Heavenly Father, because you are a good, good Father, worthy to be praised, worthy of all our praise and all our honor. Father, I truly just want to come before you with the body of believers, Father God, to just thank you for your grace, your mercy, your long suffering that you have done for each and every one of us and our family members, Lord. Forgive us all of our sins done mentally, physically, spiritually, and emotionally to you, Father, and then to our brothers and sisters, and then to the sinner, and then even to ourselves, Lord. For we cannot even judge ourselves, Father, but we ask, Lord God, that you use us, Lord. We ask that you take the prayers of this church on this day, to your throne, praying for the brothers and sisters in Afghanistan, praying for the soldiers and their families and those that lost to be encouraged to know that they did not die in vain, Lord. We pray that you will open up the eyes of the president and the vice president and the secretary of state and the government and those who are in control, Lord, of this nation, Father, we know that you, nothing happens unless you allow it to happen or orchestrate it to happen. And forgive the Christian Lord, all of us, Father, for where we fall short. Because we do. The Bible says we sin daily, Lord. And thoughts, words, actions, and deeds, not even always on purpose, Lord. Just sometimes because we, we've crossed the wrong path or woke up on the wrong side of the bed or whatever reason, Lord. But we are to be that light. We are to be that salt, Lord. Forgive us for we have dropped the ball. Forgive us when we fall short. And impart into us revelation of your spirit, Lord. That we could speak what thus says the Lord and allow folks to find you in us. Allow our character to be the character of Christ. Allow us to be that walking book. Those words in the beginning was the word, and then the word became flesh. Let this word that is being put into us change our flesh that we can represent Christ in the way we are supposed to, Lord. And I thank you, Lord that you have allowed me to be a vessel to open my mouth and let your spirit's words flow out of my mouth, Lord. And if anything has come out of my mouth that was not in line with your word, let it not take root. But everything that lined up with your word, let it build a strong foundation for our brothers and sisters to stand on. Touch our children, touch our grandchildren, touch our husbands, our wives, our fiancés, our girlfriends, our boyfriends, our bosses, the neighbor. Lord, move, move with signs, powers, and wonders, Lord God, for our prayers to be heard, for our prayers to be answered. And Father God, let your grace be sufficient for us where it is supposed to be sufficient for where you plan on not moving because you're using that situation 
to encourage us, to strengthen our faith, and to bring that other person or situation to you. And I ask all this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.